Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar and workshop series conducted by TCS in lieu of the upcoming SCS exams happening in May 2024. My name is Nicholas and I'm uh, the lead tutor and uh, evaluator for uh, SCS at TCS. So uh, let's look at the session outcomes. Some more people are joining in. Okay, yeah. So uh, let's look at the session outcomes. Uh, so first things first, I'm gonna take you through um, um, uh, you know, uh, tips pertaining to pre-seen application because uh, as I mentioned in the first webinar, which was conducted last uh, Saturday, um, I mentioned the fact that uh, you are supposed to play the role of a senior finance manager. So you are involved with uh, strategic decision-making. You are reporting to your CFO directly or any type of board member. So you are involved with uh, the long-term uh, decision uh, decisions uh, taken by the board members. So in such an environment, you have to be extremely conversant with what happens within your company. And on top of that, you need to know how your decisions are going to affect the industry dynamics. So with that in mind, you have to uh, be really conversant with uh, what's mentioned within the precinct document. Just, uh, you know, gaining an understanding about the industry as well as your uh, company's internal dynamics won't help. Whenever you are developing your answers, you have to bring in information from the precinct. And there's a methodology which you need to uh, adhere to when doing this. So I'll be talking about these things uh, in the first part of uh, tonight's session. And in the second part, I will be taking you through uh, the industry dynamics uh, based on uh, real life companies, based on uh, what happens within your chosen industry in real terms. Then uh, in the last part of tonight's webinar, I will be taking you through the pre seen document, thereby highlighting the internal dynamics of your uh, chosen company, SafeWell. Okay, so uh, before we get into the nitty gritties, let me quickly remind you about what's, uh, what we have uh, scheduled for you. So on a weekly basis, we are conducting uh, you know, webinars and workshops uh, with the intention of ensuring that you keep track of your performance. Uh, you have the opportunity of getting in touch with a tutor on a weekly basis. Uh, so that you can um, uh, keep track of uh, what you need to do on a weekly basis. Uh, you can also, uh, you know, identify whether you are sticking to the study plan or not. And after attempting each mock exam, if you have any questions and concerns, you can raise them at these weekly webinars and workshops. So um, the upcoming webinar is happening on the 13th of April, uh, where I'll be highlighting an answering technique. So out of the four webinars which we have uh, scheduled for you, uh, the third webinar or the answering technique webinar is of utmost importance. Why? Because uh, without having an understanding about how to structure your answers, without having an understanding about how to manage your time, you are not in a position to pass this exam. So most students end up uh, failing the SCS exam, especially given the fact that uh, they are not too uh, conversant with uh, time management techniques, because if you run out of time, you are not fit to play the role of a senior finance manager. So um, it's of utmost importance that you manage your time appropriately. So with all these things in mind, we have uh, you know devised an answering and time management technique. I will be explaining these things in the upcoming webinar. And on top of that, I will also take you through a free mock exam, which we have developed for you. We have already uploaded it uh, onto uh, your student dashboard. So uh, whilst taking you through this uh, free mock, I will explain how these answering and time management techniques are supposed to be uh, implemented in a practical sense. So that's happening on the 30th of April. And in the fourth webinar exam prep, I will be taking you through examiner's comments because it's of utmost importance that you understand what's expected from you and what you need to do to gain uh, the most amount of uh, marks. And on top of that, I will also highlight uh, what you need to do to build a higher level of confidence because as per the CMA examiner, if you are confident, chances of you passing the SCS exam is extremely high. So I will be sharing some tips which will help you to uh, develop uh, a higher level of positivity. And in the first two workshops, uh, these are Q&A sessions. In the first two workshops, I will be uh, you know highlighting your shortcomings at the same time, uh, taking you through uh, different uh, syllabus areas, uh, you know, thereby highlighting how different syllabus areas are tested at your exam. So I'm planning to take you through a question pertinent to E3 and P3 in uh, you know, each of these uh, workshops. 
And in the third and final workshop, which happens uh, two or three days before your exam, I will be sharing last minute tips uh, with the intention of ensuring that you walk into your exam with a positive mindset. So make use of these weekly webinars which we are conducting. Make sure to attend them live. We are recording each session as well. You can access the recorded versions if you miss any of these webinars and workshops, but uh, um, uh, to gain the most amount of benefit, it's best to uh, attend them live. Okay, so uh, let's look at what you need to get right when it comes to a pre scene application. So first things first, you need to know your key information uh, for instance, SafeWell provides physical and intelligence-led security services. So likewise, uh, you know, there are, there are codes of information uh, about the internal dynamics of the company, its industry, as well as its financial performance. So you have to be conversant with all these elements. So with that in mind, with the intention of ensuring that you really understand uh, what's highlighted within the pre-scene, we have developed something called an annotated pre-scene. You'd see what I'm talking about, what this annotated pre-scene looks like in a while, because when conducting the pre-scene analysis, when taking you through the internal dynamics of the chosen company, I will be taking you through um, the annotated pre-scene. So when you go through these annotations, you'd understand the most important points which are highlighted within the pre-scene document. And on top of that, with the intention of ensuring that you really remember what's highlighted within the pre-scene, we have developed a set of TikTok videos, three videos in total. I actually shared the first one um, uh, today in the morning via the WhatsApp group. I hope you uh, went through it where, where I've, uh, you know, come up with a mind map which covers the uh, industry dynamics. So keep watching these three TikTok videos on a continuous basis. It's just gonna take seven to nine minutes of your time. So on a daily basis, if you keep watching these uh, three TikToks, then you are in a position to easily remember what's highlighted within your pre-scene. Because if you can remember the most important points, then it uh, makes your life easy when it comes to bringing in information from the pre-scene when developing your answers. And on top of that, you have to be conversant with the numbers provided because at the very end of your pre-scene document, you would have seen that uh, the financial statements of your company, SafeWell, as well as its closest competitor um, uh, had been provided. So you have to be conversant about what happens within each of these companies so with that in mind, we have also developed uh, a set of financial analysis slides. You know, you'd see what is covered within them in a little while. So, you know, once you go through these set of slides, you'd gain an in-depth understanding about where the company stands uh, considering the numbers. So all in all, if I give you a summary, uh, everything looks good when you uh, go through the financial statements of, uh, you know, SafeWell. Compared to its closest competitor, our performance is way better. And on top of that, uh, the only uh, issue is pertaining to uh, gearing. Gearing is at 40%, but uh, which, which indicates that we can go for debt financing. However, if it uh, exceeds 50%, we might have to face some issues. Yet, even if, uh, you know, because of uh, a given scenario, after working out the gearing ratio, fresh gearing ratio, if it exceeds 50%, uh, we need not worry too much about it because our interest cover is 13 times to one, which indicates that we are generating uh, 13 times the operating profit compared to our finance cost or our loan interest. So, you know, in, in order to gain an understanding about these things, uh, an in-depth understanding about these things, you have to go through our financial analysis slides. Then you'd know your numbers because you are not fit to play the role of a senior finance manager if you are not conversant with the ratios or what's highlighted within each financial statement. And you have to prepare for possible scenarios, yet be open-minded. So when going through the five mock exams which we have developed, you'd uh, gain an understanding about the type of scenarios which can be thrown at you. And when developing these scenarios, we have uh, solely focused on what's highlighted within the pre-seed because uh, usually the CMA examiner uh, gives us uh, a, a certain a certain type of hints which are hidden within the, the pre-scene document. Uh, uh, the uh, CMA examiner gives us an indication about the type of uh, scenarios which can be tested at the exam. So based on each of these scenarios, we have developed uh, 
uh, the five mock exams. And when you go through these five mock exams, you would gain an in-depth understanding about uh, the type of scenarios which can be tested. However, you are not supposed to memorize anything. Instead, the mocks are there to, you know, uh, gain practice, gain an understanding about how each theoretical element can be tested at uh, the SCS exam. Your role is to be open-minded. Why? Because as I mentioned in the first webinar, you are playing the role of a senior finance manager. So as a senior finance manager, you cannot memorize anything. You cannot predict the type of opportunities or the threats the company might face. So if you are to do your job properly, you have to be open for anything. So it's as if uh, you are walking into office on a Monday. You um, open your systems, your emails, as well as your internal systems, and uh, you gain some information. And based on this information, you are involved with long-term decision-making. So you cannot predict what the company is going to face tomorrow or in the future. So it's of utmost importance that you be open-minded. Uh, if you are planning to memorize anything, then forget about passing the SES exam. You cannot play the role of an SFM if you try to memorize something. Okay. And remember that the scenarios presented in the exam carries the latest information. So what's highlighted within the precinct document gives us an indication about what the company had gone through in the past. It gives us a picture about the history of the company, but at your real exam, the scenarios which are thrown at you gives us an indication about what the company faces at the moment. So for instance, I was uh, talking about the gearing ratio. I said that uh, as per the financial statements um, um, uh, uh, provided uh, as part of the pre document, our gearing is at uh, 40%. But at your exam, there might be a scenario which, uh, you know, tests your understanding about financing options. So uh, the examiner might say, okay, there's this investment option at our disposal, which uh, uh, it, and in order to go ahead with it, uh, we have to spend $100 million. And when spending this amount of money, from where are we supposed to get this money? Are we going to go for, are we supposed to go for equity or are we supposed to go for debt? So when developing your answer you have to compute or calculate the fresh gearing ratio so if you talk about a gearing ratio which is 40 percent you are talking about the past of the organization instead as a senior finance manager you, yes you have to be conversant about the existing gearing ratio however considering the fresh information the present information uh, highlighted within each scenario you have to develop your answers so you can gain an in-depth understanding about all these elements if you go through the five mock exams which we have developed uh, uh, then you would be conversant with the uh, uh, most important points about your company you would be conversant with the industry dynamics you would be conversant with the numbers and you would also know the type of scenarios which can be tested at your exam so i invite you to stick to our study plan attempt a mock per week if so you'd gain an understanding about all these elements. And uh, when it comes to referring to pre information in your answers, what are you expected to do? As I mentioned earlier, when developing answers with the intention of improving the quality of your justifications, it's better to bring in information from the pre -scene. So you are supposed to refer or cite the pre in such a way that it adds value to your answer. So if for instance, uh, let's take the same example. If your you know, scenario tests your understanding about uh, financing options, if you talk about SafeWell providing physical and intelligence-led uh, security services, you are not going to get any marks. Instead, if your question is about financing options, you have to talk about gearing and uh, you know um, the, the interest cover. Okay, So that's what you need to remember. Whenever you are bringing in information, it should be relevant to the scenario. If not, just because you provide some information taken from the pre scene, you are not going to get marks. Instead, if the examiner feels that what we have included is totally irrelevant to the scenario, you are going to lose marks. So whenever you are bringing in information from the pre scene, it should not be done in a way to uh, show to the examiner that we have gone through the pre scene document. Instead, you should do it or bring in information from the pre scene with the intention of uh, showing to the examiner that you have the capability of applying relevant pre scene information, or you have the capability of improving the justifications provided by bringing in information from the pre scene. So 
You are expected to show your understanding of the pre-seen material through relevant answers without making it obvious that you are trying to prove you have you know, gone through the pre-seen or you have studied the pre-seen document. So in order to gain a good understanding about how to achieve these things, you are supposed to attend the third webinar answering technique because as I mentioned earlier, when teaching you, after teaching you answering and time management techniques, I'll take you through the free mock. And when taking you through the free mock, when you know uh, explaining how to develop an answer plan in a practical sense, I will also highlight how relevant recent information should be brought in and included within your answer. So please attend the third webinar, if possible, live, and refer to uh, suggested answers and answer plans of mock exams by going through the answer plans, you are in a position to easily understand what type of relevant pre-seen information had been brought in uh, with the intention of uh, improving your improving the quality of your justifications. And if you watch the master classes again, you'd learn uh, these uh, technicalities. Okay, then what are we supposed to do with uh, your syllabus content, E3, P3, and F3? You are supposed to prepare for application of theories and concepts. So for instance, if there is a question about, uh, you know, evaluating strategic options, uh, it could there could be a question about, um, you know, us uh, uh, expanding to another market or, you know, diversifying into another market or expanding into another country. So in such an environment, that's a strategic option. So you have to utilize SA framework or there could be a question about uh, stakeholder management. Then you have to utilize uh, your knowledge pertinent to Mendelo matrix, or there could be a question about financing options. Then you have to you know, utilize your knowledge about gearing ratios and whatnot. So likewise, and there could be uh, a question where the board members are considering different scenarios and how each scenario is gonna affect us. Then you have to bring in your knowledge pertinent to scenario planning. So likewise, you have to be conversant with different types of models and pertinent to P3, everything has to do with uh, risk management and internal controls, you know, uh, developing risk or updating risk registers. So all these elements will definitely be tested at your exam. So you are not expected to, uh, you know, just focus on certain, uh, you know, theoretical elements. Instead, you have to be conversant with the entire syllabus. So with this in mind, with the intention of ensuring that you cover the entire syllabus when conducting your preparations, we have developed our five mock exams. So if you go through all five mock exams and attempt them under exam conditions, and you know, um, go through the suggested answers or you know, watch the master classes, you are in a position to easily learn theory and improve your application skills. So it's not about developing highly theoretical answers because if you you know utilize the mendelo matrix and you know keep talking about the power levels and interest levels and there are quadrants if you try to explain each of these quadrants you're not going to get marks because remember you are the sfm of safewell you are you know reporting to your cfo when faced with a problem the cfo is going to ask for your evaluations or recommendations if you provide a highly theoretical answer, answer you are going to lose your job. You have to make your CFO's life easy by coming up with relevant information considering what the company faces at the moment. So it's not about coming up with highly theoretical answers. Instead, you have to utilize your theoretical knowledge when conducting your evaluations or when providing recommendations. So if you are conversant with theory, you'd come up with the best type of recommendations or you'd come up with high quality evaluations. So you need to learn theory, but it's not about replicating theory. It's about applying theory in a practical sense. And you are expected to prepare for interpretation of uh, figures or uh, figures and numbers. So that's exactly why I said you have to be conversant with uh, what's highlighted within the financial statements. So with that in mind, go through the financial analysis slides, which we have prepared. It's already up on uh, the student dashboard. So if you had already uh, invested, you can go through them, go through these material, uh, thereby uh, getting an understanding about the numbers. And do not skip any topic because any area can be tested and do not rely on any predictions as well. That's exactly why I said, when going through the mock exams, uh, your objective should be to again an understanding about how each theoretical element is tested at your exam instead don't try to memorize anything 
uh, because uh, you know and and don't try to rely on predictions i've seen so many tutors out there saying that certain syllabus areas will not be tested that certain uh, syllabus areas will definitely be tested uh, you know as an sfm you have to be prepared prepared for anything so with that in mind it's better to be conversant with the entire syllabus okay so before we move on to the industry analysis let me quickly tell you what we offer at tcs so uh, we are on the scs page uh, um i invite you guys to check uh, the free content by clicking on this button so under free content you'd gain access to the recorded versions of uh, all webinars and workshops the free mock exam uh, uh, its suggested answer and its answer plan and on top of that uh, we will be giving you access to our exam platform where you know, you won't have access right now because uh, I want you guys to wait until you learn answering and time management techniques uh, uh, in next week's webinar. After you are conversant with these technicalities, you are expected to practice uh, or, or implement these technicalities when going through our free mock exam. Um, so you would gain access to um, the exam platform via free content as well. And if you're in interested in investing on our paid content, check the sample material because uh, it consists of samples of uh, what you'd gain access to under each paid content. And if you're not yet part of the SES WhatsApp group, please click on this button and join it because uh, I'll be uh, keeping you guys informed about the weekly webinars and workshops which are happening. And on top of that, I will be uh, sharing um, a plethora of uh, uh, free content and on top of that if you have any questions or concerns i'm always always there uh, to help you guys out so talking about the two packages we offer uh, the value pack this is designed for students who are coming through the ex uh, through the sema general route so if so you have done your e3 p3 and f3 otqs so because of that you need not uh, go through theory you already know theory. So it's just a matter of uh, understanding how each theoretical element is tested in your exam. So, and on top of that, if you're coming through the SEMA uh, uh, general route, you have, uh, you should have uh, completed your OCS and MCS exams. So because of that, you would be conversant with uh, how these case study exams are uh, conducted by SEMA. So if you are such a student, simply go for the value pack. The value pack comes with recordings of all webinars and workshops. Uh, it also consists of uh, the five mock exams with suggested answers which are developed to cover the entire syllabus and it comes with pre scene analysis videos your pre scene is divided into three main elements so in the first pre scene analysis video uh, i've explained the industry dynamics in the second one the internal dynamics and in the third one uh, i've uh, taken you through the financial statements the pre scene analysis videos are already up on uh, uh, the uh, dashboard student dashboard and it also comes with uh, the annotated pre scene so uh, this is what the annotated pre scene looks like and as i mentioned earlier i will be taking you through the annotated pre scene when uh, conducting the pre scene analysis or, or when taking you through the internal dynamics of your chosen company as you can see we have uh, kept things simple so that you can easily understand uh, the most important points which are highlighted and on top of that we have provided our own uh, analysis and we have also highlighted probable exam scenarios uh, which can be tested we have also highlighted probable uh, syllabus areas which can be tested as well uh, with the intention of uh, making sure that your life becomes easy when conducting preparations and we have um, also included industry and financial analysis slides under the value pack so you know i'll be taking you through the industry analysis slides uh, in a little while when conducting the industry dynamics so uh, or, or when evaluating or taking you through the industry dynamics so our industry analysis slides consist of four main elements uh, first things first we have defined the industry and in the second part uh, we have uh, explained the competitive landscape uh, in the third part we have highlighted industry trends because uh, mind you uh, based on these industry trends, you are in a position to understand the type of scenarios which can be thrown at you at your real exam. And at the very end, real world examples of two real life companies are provided so that you gain a better understanding about what happens within your chosen industry when looking at uh, real life dynamics. So, and on top of that, uh, you would gain access to financial analysis slides as well. So as I mentioned earlier, each financial statement uh, has been evaluated uh, and these uh, you know, evaluations, we have kept it simple so that you can easily 
read through them and understand what happens within your chosen company and its closest competitor. So all three financial statements have been evaluated and at the end, a ratio analysis uh, uh, is done and each ratios we have uh, you know evaluated them. We have kept things simple so that you can easily understand what happens within your chosen company and a similar analysis uh, had been carried out uh, focused on your uh, closest competitor as well. So uh, these are the industry and financial analysis slides uh, and uh, you'd also gain access to top 10, uh, top 20 likely issue slides which indicates the uh, highly probable uh, scenarios which will be tested at your exam. It comes with a case study familiarization kit and access to a tutor managed live chat and OTQ revision cards. So if you go for the value pack, you have to attempt the five mock exams on your own. You have to uh, you know, practice the five mock exams under exam conditions on your own because you do not have access to the exam platform. And on top of that, you have to go through uh, the answer, uh, the, the uh, suggested answers and figure out the logic behind each answer. So it's uh, if you go for the value pack, you have to be um, comfortable with uh, conducting self-learning. And I would advise you to go through the suggested answers and based on the suggested answers to develop answer plans on your own so that you easily understand the answer structures. So the value pack is uh, priced at £249. And talking about the premium package, this is designed for students who are coming through the exemption routes, such as FLP and uh, the gateway programs. Or uh, if you had failed the SCS exam previously, you have to go for the premium package because both uh, uh, you know, sets of students uh, they lack an understanding about theoretical elements. And on top of that, mostly they have to significantly improve their application skills. So you cannot get application right if you are clueless about theoretical elements. So if you are coming through an exemption route or if you had failed previously, you need to learn theory and improve application skills. So focused on these type of students, we have developed the premium package. So the premium package comes with everything, uh, all, all, all different types of uh, uh, you know, study material covered under the value pack. Additionally, you would gain access to the online mock exam platform. So I, I said I will be teaching you uh, answering and time management techniques in our you know upcoming webinar. And when attempting each of your mock exams, you are supposed to keep practicing these answering and time management techniques because without practice, you cannot get it right. So when you are attempting the first two mocks, you will definitely run out of time. You would be frustrated. You think that uh, you are not in a position to implement the answering and time management techniques which you, you have learned. However, by the time you are at mock number three, you would realize that you have uh, a good grasp of these techniques. If so, uh, chances of you passing your SAS exam is extremely high because if you are in a position to structure your answer appropriately, if you are spending some time to plan out your answer before typing out the fully fledged answer, uh, and if you are focusing on managing your time appropriately, then you are poised for success. So with that in mind, we have given you access to the online mock exam platform. So when attempting each of your five mock exams, it's better to do it under exam conditions. Then another benefit is that uh, you'd uh, experience, uh, you know, inefficiencies which you'd uh, face at your real exam. So it's better to face these inefficiencies way before the exam rather than facing these uh, issues at your real examination. So for instance, uh, you know, usually when you are under time pressure, it leads to exam stress, exam stress leads to panic, panic leads to brain freeze. And if you are experiencing brain freeze, you cannot come up with an answer. You cannot think you are trying to read the question, but nothing goes into your head. So all these type of issues, it's better to experience them before the exam rather than uh, at your real exam. So with that in mind, we have given you access to uh, the uh, mock exam platform, and you'd also gain access to one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutor feedback on mocks three, four, and five. The first two mocks are there to get your bearings with answering and time management technique. And from mock three onwards, we are providing you with tutor feedback. So this is the type of uh, feedback which we provide at TCS, as you can see. Each uh, paragraph uh, had been evaluated. And throughout the answer script, you can see uh, the type of uh, feedback which we have provided. If there are shortcomings, we have highlighted them. So with the intention of ensuring that you really understand what your shortcomings are, if so, you stand a chance to you know, avoid them. 
or overcome these issues when attempting your next uh, mock exam. And the marks are allocated and on a subtask by subtask basis. And by looking at the success rate, you can easily understand the subtasks in which your performance was not up to the required level of standard. And once you had received tutor feedback uh, with regards to a conducting revision, your only role should be to develop, redevelop answer plans focused on the subtasks in which your performance was low, rather than you know attempting the entire mock once more by allocating three hours of your time. Simply focus on the subtasks where your performance was low. Uh, this will significantly help you to improve uh, your answer structures, answer plans. And once you had you know uh, come up with the fresh answer plans focused on the subtasks where your performance was low, you are supposed to compare your answer plans to the answer plans which we have uh, you know provided, thereby further improving your answer structures, further understanding your shortcomings, and uh, if so, you are in a position to easily pass your SCS exam. And at the very end, general comments uh, will be provided as well. So this is the type of feedback you'd receive. And you also have access to, you also gain access to the answer plans of all five mock exams. So let me quickly show you what I'm talking about. So these are the answer plans which I was talking about. So rather than going through pages and pages of suggested answers, you can easily understand the logic behind each answer, how each answer had been structured. And on top of that, you can easily understand how theoretical elements had been brought in, what type of pre-seen information had been brought in. So you can get all these things right. You can significantly improve the quality of your answers, your answer structures by going through these answer plans. And as I mentioned earlier, after going through tutor feedback, focused on the subtasks in which uh, your performance was low, you are expected to redevelop answer plans. And after redeveloping the answer plans, simply compare them to the answer plans which we have shared with you. Then you are in a position to really understand your shortcomings and overcome them at your exam. So all these things are uh, provided under uh, the premium package and the premium package also comes with uh, 15 master classes. So in each mock exam, just like in your real exam, there are three tasks. So three tasks into five mock exams comes up to uh, come up to uh, 15 uh, tasks in total. So focused on each task, we have developed masterclasses. And in each masterclass, whilst uh, you know taking you or, or teaching you the logic behind each answer, I will be teaching you theory as well as application skills. So if you watch the masterclasses, you need not go through your past uh, you know notes or the study packs and whatnot, because within six weeks, you cannot you know, do everything under the sun. You cannot uh, you know, learn theory and improve application skills. So the best way to do it is by simply watching the masterclasses. Because if you do, you are in a position to easily uh, learn theory and improve your application skills. And this comes with a pass guarantee as well. So if you invest on the premium package and end up failing, which is highly unlikely, you would gain access to the premium package in your subsequent sitting free of charge. However, in order to claim the pass guarantee, you have to complete the first three requirements. You have to complete all five mock exams. If not, you are not in a position to cover the entire syllabus. Uh, if so, you would be testing your luck at your real exam. And when uh, you know attempting each of your mock exams, your solutions need to be original. So uh, you are not expected to watch the master classes or go through the answer plans before you attempt each mock exam. Why am I asking you not to go through the answer plans or the master classes before attempting mocks? Because if so, you are cheating yourself. So there's absolutely no point of going through the answers before attempting mock exams. Because uh, if you do something like that, you are not in a position to really understand what your shortcomings are. So it's prudent to attempt the mocks on your own. Try to give your best shot. Try to understand uh, you know, how exam pressure affects you. And if you get all these things right, then at your real exam, you're going to uh, achieve a first time pass. And uh, you are supposed to meet the performance criteria uh, when attempting the uh, last three mocks, mocks three, four, and five. You are expected to get 40% or higher for mocks three, four, and five. Why have we come up with uh, this performance criteria with the intention of ensuring that you are serious when it comes to attempting the last three mocks? especially given the fact that you are receiving tutor feedback. So try to do your best job uh, when attempting the last three mocks and then you'd realize what your shortcomings are. 
if you understand your shortcomings, you are in a position to, um, you know, overcome them at your real exam. So the premium package is priced at uh, 849 pounds. However, and you can pay it in two installments of 424 uh, pounds each. However, if you opt to pay in full, you can save 100 pounds uh, and the package will be just 749 pounds. You can, you know, uh, you know, invest on your uh, preferred package by uh, clicking on either of the buttons. And uh, let me quickly take you through the study plan as well. So according to the study plan, we are in week number one. So you have enough and more time to conduct preparations. So you, are, uh, you have attended the your, your part and parcel of the second webinar. Congratulations on that. And you are within this week, you are supposed to watch the pre season analysis videos, three videos in total, which is going to take uh, something like two and a half hours of your time. Then you are supposed to refer to the annotated pre scene and refer to the financial analysis, industry analysis, and top 10 uh, likely issue slides. So this week is dedicated solely towards understanding the pre scene document. And once you have done it from week two onwards, you have to start attempting a mock exam per week. So don't wait until the last moment. If so, you'd be under you know immense uh, amounts of stress. And when you're under stress, um, you're not in a position to manage your work at office or manage your studies. So it's best to start right now because as per our study plan, uh, or, or if you stick to our study plan, you just need to find seven hours of study time per week. So uh, three hours should be allocated to... Uh, attempt a mock per week and the remaining four hours should be allocated towards uh, watching the master classes with the intention of learning theory and uh, improving application skills. So that's, uh, so out of the seven hours, your real job is to find three hours on a weekly basis to attempt a mock per week. Everything else is handled by us. So if you stick to our study plan in the seventh week, that is a week before the exam, you will be relaxing when all the other students are scrambling for time. So we have, uh, you know, uh, explained the study plan in our previous webinar. So if you, you know, missed it, go watch the recorded version, then you'd understand what we are expected to achieve on a weekly basis. Okay, so having said that, uh, let's move on to the pre scene analysis. So first things first, I'm going to take you through the uh, industry dynamics. So I'm going to take you through uh, certain parts of our industry analysis slides. So uh, let's, uh, you know, it's it's best to, uh, you know, gain an understanding about the definition of uh, the considered uh, industry. So this time, SCS pre scene is based on the security provision industry. So we are involved with, if you look at SafeWell, we are involved with the provision of physical and intelligence-led security services. So physical services, physical security services are all about... Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, employing security guards and, uh, you know, uh, providing outsourced uh, services to third parties. And intelligence-led security uh, services has everything to do with providing risk management and related consultancy services. Okay, so we are involved with, or we are looking at uh, two main elements. We are involved with the provision of physical security services as well as intelligence-led security services. You would gain a better understanding about you know, these elements when I take you through the internal dynamics of uh, SafeWell. So this is an industry which provides services to uh, protect assets, people, and information from physical threats. And what type of main activities are carried out within this industry? With regards to physical security, uh, these companies provide security guarding, they provide surveillance services, and they are involved with handling access controls. Uh, all these uh, services are provided to third parties. And when it comes to uh, providing intelligence-led services, uh, these companies are involved with risk evaluation and risk management initiatives. So rather than a company trying to evaluate its own risks and manage it on their own, they will uh, outsource. They have the opportunity of outsourcing it to a specialist third party. So that's where companies like Safeway come in. So SafeWell employs, according to the pre scene document, 22,000 risk management consultants who are spread across the world, you know, providing services to a plethora of, uh, you know, industries, a plethora of companies and a plethora of clients. So uh, all these, uh, you know, consultants who are employed 
uh, uh, within SafeWell are providing risk evaluation and risk management related services. And they are providing consultancies focused uh, especially on uh, ensuring data security and data privacy. And on top of that, they are involved with uh, conducting, uh, you know, corporate training initiatives. Again, these uh, training initiatives are carried out uh, with the sole intention of ensuring that uh, the management uh, level employees of a given company are conversant with risk identification and risk mitigation activities. Okay, so we are involved with all these things and what type of goals are, are the players trying to fulfill to ensure the safety of assets and people prevent unauthorized access, provide timely responses to security incidents and risk identification and mitigation services. So these are the goals. And looking at the trends of the industry, as I said, I'm not gonna take you through all these slides. Instead, I'm solely gonna focus on what's uh, most important. So looking at the trends which affects this industry, uh, you see a lot of technological advancements because uh, in the good olden days, especially when providing physical security services, uh, you know, you had uh, human beings involved. However, with technological advancements, you need not have access to, uh, you know, human beings or security guards. Instead, you can utilize uh, technology such as CCTV and whatnot. So uh, on top of utilizing uh, digital technologies, Digital technologies are, you know, uh, the, the, the efficiency of digital technologies had been improved by the use or the integration of AI and IoT technologies. So artificial intelligence is heavily used within this industry, as well as the uh, Internet of Things technology, because it's best to uh, create a network between uh, different uh, peripherals used by a company, different types of devices used by a company, as well as its uh, employees or clients. So with that in mind, IoT technology is utilized with the uh, hope of improving the quality of uh, security services provided. And drones are utilized for aerial monitoring these days. And um, with regards to access controls, uh, biometric access controls are utilized by companies. So these are things which uh, any player, major player within the security industry uh, tries to invest on at all times. And there are integrated security solutions provided by major players within the industry. Uh, so what is an integrated security solution? This is a scenario where a company combines physical and cyber security services. So you'd have uh, human security guards and with the intention of uh, helping or assisting the human security guards, uh, cyber uh, security services are also provided. So these uh, integrated se security se solutions are uh, um, you know, in demand. And on top of that, uh, these companies need to ensure that they fall in line with data privacy and data security regulation, because uh, especially as per what's highlighted at the very end of your pre seen document, it gives us an indication about the type of uh, privacy or security issues, which we might be exposed to. Definitely, there's going to be a question about it at uh, your real examination. So expect you are expected to come up with uh, uh, you know, mitigate a reaction, uh, suggest internal controls, uh, suggest, suggest uh, how to update the risk register considering these uh, issues. So all these elements will definitely be tested at your exam. So data privacy and compliance is uh, a major area which affects these security companies, especially given the fact that uh, most security companies out there are utilizing uh, digital technology. So adherence to data protection re regulations, which fall under GDPR, uh, uh, is of utmost importance. Then looking at the emerging trends, uh, companies are utilizing advanced analytics as well, such as uh, big data and machine learning. So you are gathering a lot of data, confidential data uh, from your clients. So it's best to utilize big data, which uh, helps you with the uh, analytical processes and machine learning is used uh, with the intention of providing better services to your clientele. Uh, because if you utilize machine learning, then uh, we can be involved with uh, predictive threat analysis. So we can predict threats before they occur. So as a security service company, we have to be extremely conversant with risk identification and risk management services, which falls under intelligence led security service provision. So with um, uh, all these elements in mind, we have to invest on big data and machine learning. 
and sustainability is key because uh, the uh, major players within the security industry, since they are utilizing a lot of digital systems, it results in carbon emissions because uh, we have to gather a lot of data. So we have to utilize our own uh, databases, our you know um, servers, our clouds and whatnot, which results in uh, energy energy consum consumption. So if, when we are consuming a lot of energy, it results in carbon emissions. And because of that, our carbon footprint is not too good. So in such an environment, we have to, it's best if we focus on sustainability. So this is an emerging trend. And most companies are investing on remote monitoring uh, systems as well. Uh, so there's a growth in SOCs, SOC operations, where uh, you know a company rather than utilizing human beings for surveillance work, they'd uh, you know utilize technology and do it remotely, uh, which will ensure that uh, human beings are, are not faced with uh, any type of safety threats. These things are highlighted within your pre scene as well. So when we are utilizing here human beings, they uh, they uh, they are faced with safety threats. So we can get rid of all these different types of safety threats if we invest on remote monitoring systems. Okay, so the, these are uh, the things which uh, happens in real life when considering uh, the security industry. So having said that, let's move on to. Uh, the internal dynamics of your chosen company. So as I mentioned earlier, Safewell is involved with providing two main types of security services. They are involved with providing physical security services as well as uh, uh, intelligence-led security services. So let me quickly tell you um, what these things are. So when it comes to physical security services, we are you know uh, providing services to third parties, thereby helping our clients man their reception areas. We are providing site security, as well as we are involved with uh, the provision of retail security services, especially focused on uh, uh, you know, companies such as supermarkets, where uh, the threat of theft is extremely high. So these are the three main types of uh, physical security services which we provide as a company. And on top of that, uh, looking at intelligence-led security services, which we offer, we are providing risk advisory services, so when it comes to a company, uh, you know, expanding to another country or, you know, uh, dealing with a foreign investment, entering a new industry and whatnot. So if a company is uh, taking some type of a risky step, then we are there to help them out uh, to identify threats and mitigate each type of threat. So we are providing risk advisory services. And we also help our clients uh, conduct corporate investigations to keep uh, fraudulent activities in check. And based on it, uh, we are expected to come, uh, you know, uh, recommend internal controls. So we are supposed to develop the control environment or suggest improvements uh, to our clients. And we are also involved with uh, penetration testing. We try to, you know, run our tests and uh, try to figure out whether the internal controls with practice within a certain company are sound. If not, we'd come up with our own recommendations and we conduct corporate training initiatives as well. So these are the main type of activities which we uh, conduct uh, within our company. Then uh, the main thing is uh, you need to understand uh, uh, about the uh, type of leadership within the company and what we believe in or what we try to achieve. So with that in mind, I'm gonna take you through the mission, vision and value system of this company. So the mission gives us an indication about the reason for being, or in short, it gives us an understanding about why SafeWell exists within this industry. So the mission is to provide security solutions and services. And why are we providing security solutions and services with the intention of enabling clients to focus on their core business? So we are providing outsourced services to our clients. So rather than the clients handling their own security, be it physical security or intelligence-led security, we handle it for them. So we are providing specialized services, security solutions to our clients. And our vision gives us an indication about what we strive to achieve in the future. So we strive to become the most trusted service provider within this industry. And looking at the values, uh, it gives us an indication about the corporate culture practiced within SafeWell or the belief system uh, practiced within uh, SafeWell. 
So we always try to be responsive to the needs of our customers. We always try to be innovative. We have a history of 100 odd years. So over uh, 100 odd years, we have been innovative every each time, you know, some type of uh, uh, innovation affected the industry. We were the first to implement them. So that's something good. So it's uh, highlighted within our belief system. And on top of that, we are hell-bent on treating our employees with respect at the same time, ensuring their safety. So uh, when looking at uh, uh, these value systems, we can think, we, we can see that we are thinking not only about our customers or clients, we are also thinking about our own employees, which is good. And overall analysis is we have to, based on all this information, you'd be expected to analyze stakeholders based on the level of power and interest utilizing your knowledge uh, covered under the Mendelo matrix, which uh, appears within your E3 syllabus. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are not only focusing on clients, we are focusing on the well-being of our employees as well. So because of that, your knowledge pertaining to um, GRI or integrated reporting will be tested, which falls under your F3 syllabus. And uh, the probable exam scenarios which can be thrown at you, considering this information, uh, you'd be expected to recommend internal controls in relation to uh, efficiency improvements, how to bring about efficiency improvements, and uh, how to manage stakeholders, uh, you know, efficiency of service delivery, ensuring safety at work, and uh, different when faced with different types of risks, you are expected to suggest internal controls considering what's highlighted within each and every scenario. Then looking at uh, the board members, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's absolutely no point of trying to remember what each board member has achieved over a period of time, what their qualifications are, or what their past exposure is. Instead, you know, it's best to go through these points when you are reading through the annotated present to gain a general understanding about the skills and capabilities of our board members. So all in all, our board members are skilled, educated and experienced, and they possess an appropriate level of industry knowledge, which is good for corporate governance. And uh, they, are, they have been working within SafeWell for some time. Each of our board members, executive directors, as well as non-executives, they have been uh, employed within SafeWell for some time. So they are conversant with the internal dynamics of the company, which is, again, extremely good for corporate governance. However, there is an imbalance between executive directors and uh, independent non-executive directors. As per the information provided, we have uh, five executive directors and just four independent non-executive directors, which exposes us to governance risk, which is covered under your P3 syllabus. So as you know, as per corporate governance uh, uh, best practices, a company should have a good balance between executive directors and non-executive directors. So it's best if uh, uh, if we have five executive directors, it's uh, prudent to have five independent non-executive directors. If so, the balance uh, is good between EDs and uh, INEDs or executive directors and non-executive directors. So there's definitely going to be a question cover, uh, you know, uh, uh, focused on this element. And on top of that, some board members have held academic posts. Uh, they have been, uh, you know, employed within universities. They have played the role of uh, a lecturer. You know, three of our board members have had uh, academic posts, which is good for us because uh, we, the, all these, uh, you know, uh, 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 networks as well as knowledge can be utilized uh, when providing consultancy services and it's good for recruitments as well. And on top of that, we are involved with providing a corporate training. So they are, you know, teaching experience is going to be beneficial for us when uh, developing our corporate uh, training uh, uh, syllabuses or uh, services. And looking at the board composition, it's better to appoint an executive director or non-executive director with IT or IS expertise, especially given the fact that we are utilizing a lot of uh, information systems. Uh, we are conducting penetration tests. And on top of that, when providing our services, we might have to integrate our own systems with that of our clients. So with that in mind, with all these elements in mind, it's best that we appoint a director with IT or IS exposure or uh, it's best that we have um, 
uh, a separate department which is headed by a board member which uh, or, or who looks into IT or IS related activities carried out by the organization because if you look at uh, the board responsibilities there are uh, four main directors under the CEO so there's a director of uh, physical security services so that's one uh, aspect of uh, our business model then the second aspect is with regards to provision of uh, intelligence led uh, security services so focused on each element we have two directors which is good and each director is looking at business development uh, activities concerning their own uh, um, area and on top of that they are handling hr related elements uh, and there is a cfo uh, who is uh, uh, focused on financial reporting management accountancy and treasury related functions and there is a, a separate director who looks into legal risk and business ethics so this individual ensures health and safety ensures that we comply with different type of regulations especially data privacy and data security related regulations and uh, this in individual is also involved with enterprise risk management uh, which safeguards us from different types of risks however as you can see there is you know no separate ito is director and as per what i highlighted as per uh, the emerging emerging trends uh, which will affect your industry definitely it makes sense to appoint a separate ito is uh, uh, director so you know there will be questions about board appointments so when such a question is thrown at you uh, always remember to recommend uh, uh, the appointment of an executive director or a non-executive director uh, who focuses on it and is elements and other than that board responsibilities are properly allocated and based on all this information uh, probable exam scenarios which can be tested will be with regards to appointing an executive director or a non-executive director. You'd have to you know, evaluate between uh, us appointing an executive director or a non-executive director utilizing your knowledge about corporate governance. Then uh, uh, your knowledge pertaining to board responsibilities will be tested. That's exactly why I said that it's better to appoint an IT or IS uh, you know, executive director or non-executive director. Then board composition versus corporate governance. I said that there is an imbalance between uh, EDs and NEDs. So all these elements uh, will be tested at your exam. And uh, looking at the board committees, uh, we have four board committees in total, the audit committee, risk committee, remuneration committee, and nomination committee. So the audit committee sets the control environment, looks after the internal controls of the organization. Then the risk committee, uh, is involved with uh, risk identification and risk mitigation uh, strategies. Then the remuneration committee looks into uh, the bonuses and the salaries paid to our directors. So rather than the directors deciding uh, uh, by themselves about the amount of salaries they are supposed to receive, it's best that it that uh, you know these uh, elements are handled through a remuneration committee. And when it comes to uh, board appointments. It, it's best that it occurs through a nomination committee. If not, the board members will decide amongst themselves and uh, appoint their own friends, family members, or colleagues, which is not good for corporate governance. So all in all, it's good to have these four uh, uh, different uh, uh, you know, board committees. And as per corporate governance regulation or, or best practices, uh, it's best that a majority of uh, 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 these uh, members who are operating within each of these uh, 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 board committees it's best that the majority of uh, the members are independent non-executive directors and that's exactly what you can see when you look at uh, the internal dynamics of safewell all our members who are part and parcel of each of these uh, uh, committees are non-executive directors. So we are falling in line with uh, corporate governance best practices. However, there is uh, a major shortcoming. Our non-executive chairperson is uh, you know, located within the audit committee, but as per corporate governance best practices, the chairperson should not be included within the audit committee. If not, uh, there will be an independence risk when with regards to setting the control environment of any given company. So that's the only shortcoming which we can see. Other than that, 
the non-executive directors, uh, uh, the, the board committee is solely comprised of non-executive directors, which is extremely good. And the chief uh, internal auditor reports to the audit committee, which is again, uh, something good, which uh, affects corporate governance in a positive manner. So based on all this uh, in, important information, areas which can be tested are with regards to combined code of corporate governance practiced in the UK, uh, which is covered within your E3 syllabus. And at the very end, uh, the principal risk report uh, highlights the type of risks uh, identified by the company, the impacts of each risk and what type of mitigatory action the company uh, adheres to when trying to manage each type of risk. I'm not going to take you through all these risks because these elements are covered in depth within our uh, pre scene analysis sessions. Instead, I'm solely going to focus on one main risk because there's a major shortcoming within the company. So if you look at the fourth risk, Safewell enters into complex long-term and high-value contracts with clients, particularly in relation to physical security services. So we go for long-term contracts. And because of these long-term contracts, we are exposed to certain risks and contract terms can uh, prove onerous. For example, foreign contracts may be billed in clients' currencies. So this indicates that we are exposed to forex risk or foreign exchange risk. So let's try to figure out the mitigate reaction taken by the company. All contracts are subject to a detailed review by our in-house legal staff. Ongoing contracts are reviewed regularly and any adverse issues are identified and managed where possible. So our mitigate reaction solely focuses on uh, managing the risk pertaining to the contracts which we sign. Other than that, there's no mention about forex risk. So you know, uh, I've uh, conducted evaluations based on it. So as you can see, each risk I've, uh, you know, mentioned the risk which we have identified as well as the mitigatory action which uh, the company has uh, adhered to. I've assessed the mitigatory action, highlighting whether it's uh, conversant or whether it's uh, appropriate or not. And at the very end, I've provided uh, recommendations pertaining to enhancements if, you know, we have to improve uh, uh, the mitigated reaction taken by the company. So the risk is uh, us uh, having to sign complex long-term contracts, especially in foreign currencies, which can be onerous. So uh, the mitigated reaction stipulated within the risk report is that we are conducting detailed reviews of contracts by legal staff, and we are regularly reviewing ongoing contracts to manage adverse issues. So my assessment is that the mitigation measures are appropriate. However, Safewell could benefit from implementing a contract management system to streamline the review process and enhance risk management. So rather than us, uh, you know, asking our legal department to handle all different types of contracts, we can easily, you know, ask them to do it. However, we cannot ensure efficiency because we are dealing with hordes of clients spread across the world. If you look at the internal dynamics, we are, you know, uh, located uh, throughout the world. We are a global company. We are, you know, handling different types of clients. We have a history of 100 plus years. So in such an environment, how can our legal department do their job properly? Because they are dealing with hordes of customers. So rather than simply asking our legal department uh, to manage these affairs, manage these contracts, it's better to invest on a contract management system. Also, Safewell has failed to identify the exposure to forex risk within their risk report. So how can we enhance this mitigated reaction? It's better to utilize advanced contract management software, as I mentioned earlier, that provides real-time monitoring of contract performance. Uh, if we invest on a contract management software, it will give us automated alerts for contract renewal and breaches and analytics for risk assessment. So our life is going to be extremely easy when keeping track of you know, these hordes of contracts which we have signed. And implementing a centralized repository for all contracts can improve accessibility and transparency. So if we invest on a, a software, then our data gathering will be centralized. If so, our uh, you know, employees who are involved with these uh, elements can easily gain access to each type of contract, gain an understanding about the shortcomings within the contracts, which will ensure that we uh, avoid any undue risks.
and additionally conducting regular training for staff involved in contract negotiation and management can help ensure that they are equipped to handle complex contractual issues effectively so when it comes to signing contracts if our employees know uh, uh, you know about these elements if we are trained our employees properly then we can avoid these issues at the point of uh, uh, at the point at which each contract is signed so there won't be hiccups uh, when it comes to signing each type of contract and uh, there's no mention about forex risk so what are we supposed to do to manage exposure to forex risk safewell can use hedging instruments such as forwards futures and options and also the company can include currency clauses in contracts that address uh, exchange rate fluctuations potentially by fixing rates so we can fix the rates as well if the client is happy with it and additionally the company can spread exposure across multiple currencies to mitigate the impact of volatility in any single currency so if you go through the financial statements uh, of your chosen company safe well um, there is a currency reserve which indicates that we are holding on to different types of currencies which is good which can be used to mitigate forex risk although we are holding on to different types of currencies it's not mentioned within our risk report. So if something is not mentioned within the risk report, we are not ready to face these issues. That's what it indicates. So uh, I've highlighted what uh, type of mitigated reaction we are supposed to take with the intention of uh, um, um, improving our action pertaining to managing risks. So just like uh, the uh, uh, you know evaluations which I've provided for the fourth risk, for each of the five risks highlighted within your uh, pre seen document, I've conducted my evaluation. So uh, you can gain access to all this information if you go through the annotated pre seen Okay, so that's that. Uh, I, I hope you gain an in-depth understanding about what happens within your chosen company as well as, industry, as, well as its industry. Having said that, uh, if you have any questions, you can raise them now. So I'm going to pause the recording. All right, folks, thank you very much for your questions. I hope I addressed everything. Um, so, you know, um, let me quickly uh, tell you about uh, what we achieved, uh, the pass rate which we achieved in uh, the past uh, session. So we achieved a 94% pass rate. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, you know, more students who uh, end up uh, investing on the premium package gain more than 100 marks, especially given the fact that they stick to our study plan and attempt a mock per week. If so, you are in a position to uh, improve your performance on a weekly basis, uh, which uh, leads to a sure pass at your ACS exam. And uh, uh, before I get into the last parts, uh, let me quickly you know, take you to the uh, uh, student dashboard as well. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can gain access to uh, the paid as well as free content via our dashboard. So, and on top of that, uh, we have, uh, you know, integrated uh, progress tracker, which helps you uh, keep track of your performance. And on top of that, I can check your performance on a weekly basis. Every Monday, I will be sending you a message, uh, uh, actually uh, highlighting whether you have, uh, you know, adhered to the study plan or not. I'll be pushing you on a weekly basis. Uh, you, yeah, I'd, I'd be uh, a pain in the ass uh, in the upcoming six weeks. Uh, so bear with me. And for for instance, uh, you know, um, I'll show you how the performance tracker works. So, so as you can see, each uh, area which you have checked are uh, indicated in green. And if you had missed out on any element, it's indicated indicated in red. And each video. Um, your performance or, or your watch uh, uh, seconds are kept track of so that you can easily uh, keep track of uh, your uh, performance. Uh, you can easily uh, measure whether you have missed out on any of the videos or any of the study content. And on top of that, I'll be uh, checking your performance on a weekly basis and uh, reminding you what you need to get done. So that's uh, having said that, um, it brings us to the end of tonight's webinar. Before we wind up, let me uh, you know, mention how you can contact us. Uh, you can contact us uh, via, via our website, which is www.studyattcs.com. So simply go to the contact area, then it, uh, the website will uh, direct you to the get in touch area. So you know, mention your query 
and you can email us on info at study at tcs.com or whatsapp us on our whatsapp number and i invite you guys to follow us on our social media handles especially youtube and tiktok the recorded versions of uh, these webinars and workshops will be uploaded onto our youtube channel and as i mentioned earlier um uh, via TikTok, you'd gain access to the study plan, no, not the study plan, uh, the uh, study summary, not the study summary, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the mind map, yes. <laughs> the mind map, uh, which covers the entire pre-scene. So on a continuous basis, on a daily basis, keep watching these uh, three TikToks uh, so that uh, you remember the most important points highlighted within your pre-scene document. So you know, make use of all these uh, resources which we are providing free of charge. So having said that, thank you very much for joining uh, this session. I hope you gain an in-depth understanding about SafeWell, its internal dynamics, its external dynamics, uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, what's highlighted within their financial statements, uh, as well as the risk report. I hope to see you in our next webinar. Uh, where I will be teaching you an answering and time management technique. And if you keep practicing these answering and time management techniques, you are in a position to champion it. If so, you definitely pass your ACS exam. So thank you very much. I'll see you guys next week, next Saturday. See you. Good night.